Hello, I'm Dick Taylor. I'm Deputy Chief of Engineering for the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, Omaha District. And this morning we're standing on a levee unit along the Missouri River in eastern Iowa. And this levee system is not too dissimilar from other levee systems in Nebraska, Iowa, and Missouri that experienced substantial under seepage damage during the flood event of 2011. In areas near Percival, Iowa, Hamburg, Iowa, and Rockport, Missouri, there were breaches that occurred in the levee system during the flood event. The Corps of Engineers has been working to repair the most critical damages, and those are the areas that had breached or experienced significant scour in the levee system. And we accomplished that by the 1st of March of this year. Since that time, the Corps of Engineers has been diligent in completing the permanent repairs of the levee system. These repairs range from correcting under seepage damage, fixing scour areas, to regrading the levee crests. The design of some of these repairs hinges on a simple question. What's beneath our feet? For instance, take this spot. Given the scour damage that occurred to this levee system, this appears to be a prime candidate to move the levee back about 300 yards. One of the key questions in levee design is, can the ground that the levee is going to sit on, will it be able to support the mass of the levee system that's going to be built in this area? So that's one of the reasons why we come out and do field investigations and geotechnical analysis is to look at how compressible this soil is. Will it, will it settle under the weight of that levee system? And we do that to make sure that the levee is built to the right elevation so it provides the level of protection that we need for this area. Or is the ground porous and susceptible to under seepage? And if it is, we need to know that so we can design the levee system for it. Unless I know what's below the ground, I don't know the answer to that. And that's where our geotechnical investigations come in. Through the use of a variety of technologies, both invasive and non-invasive, we can effectively peel away the layers of the earth and see what the geological composition is in those areas where we're going to build levee setbacks or seepage berms. So here's a look at multiple electrode resistivity testing, or MER for short. This is the Super Sting R8. It's uh, made by Advanced Geosciences. Um, essentially, it's just a earth resistivity and IP meter. Um, it works by injecting electrical current into um, these stakes which are connected to electrodes and then it is going to read electrodes um, down line and essentially measure what the electrical field is that they're picking up in those electrodes that aren't injecting. So it's injecting and then measuring uh, multiple electrodes, MER, down the line to uh, see what the uh, voltage is. Well, after we take the data off the Super Sting, we stick it in um, and process it through Earth Imager 2D. Um, based off that, we'll do an inversion. We get the inverted resistivity, and that's the uh, picture that you see that has the various colors representing various resistive values. We're hoping to see differences in materials because of the different properties of materials um, lend them to have different resistivities. Like say, for, for an example, trying to distinguish between a clay and a sand. The, the thing that really sticks out in almost all of these that I have down here is the, the reds and the oranges, uh, where you have these big red blotches on these sections. Uh, those indicate uh, sand bodies, and those are usually the places that we look for to target um, further investigation of the CPT borings and the uh, standard geotechnical borings. We'll use the MER data to identify areas of interest that we want to do cone penetrometer testing, or CPTs. Uh, CPT, we take a probe just like this one here, and we push it into the ground, and we use the information from this probe to classify the soil into soil behavior types. Um, the different parts of the probe measure different things. We get a tip resistance that's measured right here, and uh, so harder soils would be, you'd need more pressure to push through. We get a sleeve friction, which is where um, the friction of the soil moving past the sleeve here is measured. And then we get a pore pressure. We have a pore uh, pressure unit right here. This records the amount of pressure that you have in between the, so in between the grains of the soil. As you can see, there's, there's dark blues, and then there's the bright uh, reds and oranges that I already uh, indicated were sand. Now, dark blues, are um, commonly uh, clay bodies and so and that's what you want to see is the contrast now where it becomes um, important to get the borings and the cpts is these colors you know generally mean red is sand blue is clay 
However, depending on if the material's dry, if it's wet, um, grain size, and, and a bunch of other factors, um, you do not necessarily know that's the case until you get the, the information um, from the CPTs and from the borings. And that's what we try to show here is this is a CPT plot and then you can match that up on the section itself and you can see what that means. MERs and CPTs tell us a lot about what's below the ground surface, but we still have to go back and do traditional geotechnical borings and sampling to confirm and validate that data. The geologists in the field will do an initial classification to determine if the soils are sands, gravels, clays, or some combination of that, and then we'll send a sample into the lab for further testing. We'll use the geotechnical data to complete our seepage analysis and design for the final repairs of the levee systems along the Missouri River. This work will continue throughout the summer and fall with the goal of completing all the repairs and restoring the levees to their pre-flood condition by the end of this year. For the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, I'm Dick Taylor. Thank you for watching.